Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and it is Saturday, November 25th of the year 2023, and uh, I hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving, if you celebrate that and then you're in the U.S. Uh, today we are returning to our Ultimate General American Revolution series, our second series, if you will, uh, where we have claimed in any event to have learned the game a little bit and we are returning to try and see if we can do better uh, as the americans in this early access real-time strategy and uh, war game uh, it is may 22nd in our let's play series originally we steamrolled the british taking newport providence and middleborough threatening boston uh, and losing leicester and portsmouth uh, the British then were driven out of Leicester as we moved north with the bulk of our main force, but doing so left Providence and Newport vulnerable to the British who counterattacked and retook both of those cities. We since moved south from Leicester to retake Providence from the British, and now we have a considerable British garrison at Newport that is somewhat isolated. It is a port city, so I think they can still bring supply in, uh, but it is a little bit isolated down here. However, Providence itself is also not on a supply line. Uh, and so it is isolated itself. Providence seems, based on what we can see here at Middleborough, somewhat secure from British counterattack immediately. But we do need to try and eject the British from Newport so we can link these three towns up. Additionally, I believe on June 1st, the map is going to expand west into New York. Uh, so we'll have a bunch more cities and towns to manage and some threats perhaps to our flank and rear may open up, which means it'll be harder to maintain a concentration of force on this approach to Boston from the south. So ejecting the enemy from Newport sooner rather than later, fairly important. Now, in our last episode, we did start to have some financial troubles. We had to reduce the pay for our soldiers, which we had doubled at the start. We reduced, we started at 0.5 whatever these are, dollars or whatever coins uh, per soldier. Uh, we increased it to one. Now we've dropped it back to 0.6. So that will influence the morale of our troops a bit. Um, but we have to live with it. Um, we also do need to figure out how to overwhelm 1,800 soldiers at Newport without opening up Providence to an easy enemy march in from Middleborough and or Boston to retake the city. We could march everybody south defeat Newport, and then move north, but there's a risk they'll bring considerable forces in from Boston and retaking Providence won't be so easy. So I do want to leave at least some garrison there. They got about a 1,000 men between Kearney's regiment and the Middleborough garrison, so I don't want to leave less than one regiment. I really would like to leave, you know, two regiments, maybe about 900 troops behind, but if we do that, then there's only 1,600 versus 1,800, and so that's not a very favorable situation so maybe we'll just leave one regiment. It looks like two of our militia units have artillery batteries. One of them does not. Uh, I could leave the troops who don't have an artillery battery behind uh, while we advance with the other boys on the city. I want to make sure to bring our regular units, which are these large fusilier regiments, as well as the artillery. One other thing we can do also to increase our strength, at least until June 1st when the map opens up a bit more, is pull troops from Hartford with the Leicester garrison up here. Uh, it's unlikely the enemy is going to drive from Boston through the Natsog Forest toward Hartford. Uh, we had the issue where enemy troops retreating from Leicester uh, threatened to take Hartford. But in terms of the likelihood of that occurring, it would be from Newport. And if we advance troops from Hartford to Newport, they'll block any enemy advance that way. So we could do that. And actually, we've got a, a regiment here, the Portsmouth Militia of 150 men. But if we actually double click here, we can expand this unit so we can use uh, sort of new troops to make this a larger unit. And that's what we're going to do because I don't have any officers available to build a new regiment. So we need to make the ones we have stronger. So let's go ahead and add some more companies to this unit. We're going to add a civilian musket company here of militia. And then we're going to go ahead and we also have some artillery. So we're going to go ahead and add a three, a three pound galloper gun battery here as well. And it looks like three companies is the largest for this militia unit. So 150 uh, recruits that are going to be equipped with rifle or not rifles, but uh, civilian muskets and then 100 troops that will be equipped with artillery uh, as well, because the more guns you can guns are important and uh, having more artillery is important. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go ahead and assign these. The max strength of this force will be 400 men, uh, and hopefully that will uh, that'll help us out of it. We can advance 400 men here. That'll negate leaving behind 400 men at Providence and still allow us to go in with about a six or 700 man advantage. It does seem like the British are somewhat distracted. They got about 600 soldiers facing off against Murray's detachment here of Pennsylvania militia. Um, 
which have been sort of stuck on the coast here and are starving, but they've been like here for weeks. So it seems like these troops are being drawn away, which may delay any drive on Providence as well. So let's go ahead and get the clock moving again. Um, I think it'll take a few days for the, uh, for these troops at Hartford to be raised. Probably the new units. Let's see. Let's just actually see how quickly they get recruited. So it's 150. Though that that company's full strength. These guys are at 20 and 20. Let's see what it moves up to on the 23rd. These troops are moving. Oh shoot! Some soldiers of the Pennsylvania militia are now in Britain's prisoners. So they took, they captured that whole regiment. That regiment surrendered now after quite a bit of time. Uh, we got more ammo from trusted couriers. A nice little event there. But let's see. One day, do we not have enough guns? Oh, we don't have enough muskets. Because we are drawing reinforcements elsewhere. So we have no civilian muskets in our arsenals. Can we go to the market? We don't have a lot of money to spend. We do have some units, I believe, with Charleville rifles here. I know we have at least two companies that are using brown besses. We've got two companies, I believe, here that are using Charleville 77s. Uh, if we go to the market... There's 144 of them for sale. I don't have a lot of money to spend. I don't really have four grand to spend on that. But I would like to increase the amount that we have in our stockpile to around 80. That'll get us close to being able to equip the rest of those two companies with those weapons. Likewise, for the Brown Besses, we'll spend about 400 to get 15 more, hopefully to equip those companies fully. And then maybe, how much is civilian muskets? They're... Let's do 120 for 800. So we got about two grand left. And maybe that'll help with these, these boys getting getting reinforcements. It does look like they, they recruited pretty much pretty darn quickly. The artillery company filled out in one day. The infantry company just has 42 more men and they'll be filled tomorrow. I think they're recruiting quickly because there was a surplus of recruits at Hartford. So they had a hundred they had like three hundred soldiers they could draw from immediately. That's why you don't see the units in Port Providence recruiting as quickly because they don't have surplus recruits here. Um, so that's that's kind of what's going on here is they're drawing from a, a pool where the other the other province isn't. All right, so now we have to deal with about a thousand or twelve hundred enemy troops to the east at Middleborough, which is going to make a drive out of Portsmouth even more dicey. But you've got to stay there, I think, at least until the twenty fourth. Although maybe the artillery will withdraw north. And our artillery cavalry doesn't look like it. So the enemy has 1,300 troops at Middleborough. Let's see what happens on the 24th here. If we get this company up to full strength. Our money situation's not great. So wait, wait, what was this? We've been informed that our unit Pennsylvania militia commanded by Ebenezer Murray was found dead near Moore. So the whole unit or the general? Was the general found dead? Because that would suck if we lost a commander just killed. We know that the enemy has 122 POWs in Middleborough. I don't know. Oh, no, it looks like Ebenezer Murray is in Middleborough. So they captured his 122 men and him. So if we take Middleborough, we will get him back, as well as the POWs that were captured. But let's go ahead and move this forward to the 24th, and that's the day that I think we set for the offensive to begin. All right, so the troops that had been fighting him also drew some reserves. But it looks like we are fully kitted out here with the Portsmouth Militia. So we're going to go ahead and have them leave and head out toward Newport. Now, if the enemy concentrates both their force at Middleborough and Newport, they will overwhelm me. Let's hope they don't pull. I'm also going to bring 450 troops south from Leicester, hoping that the enemy doesn't, uh, doesn't leave Boston to try and come get them. And then as these troops get closer, we will pull our troops out of Providence itself. Meanwhile, we're going to bring our commanding general west a little bit into the Great Meadow. 
so that we can more quickly gain some intel on the enemy. Looks like our troops are moving pretty quick, especially Evans' boys, which are moving on a road. So 500 enemy troops. Maybe they're going to pursue Evans' boys? Oh, God. Okay, I didn't mean for this to happen. So it looks like they're going to pursue Evans. I don't know how far, but they're pursuing him back toward Hartford, which I don't really... Suspicious merchant. Residents report that one of the merchants is helping the British. There's no reliable evidence. However, your orders, uh, we can arrest him and partake confiscated funds. So if we arrest him, our loyalty goes down by 5% in Connecticut. Loyalty is currently 78%. If we don't arrest him, then our loyalty goes up. I need that money, though, so I'll, I'll take the hit. Rumors spread through the colonial towns about a secret of black market network known as the Silent Exchange. 416 brown best 69s. Hell yeah. Really hope they don't pursue him all the way to Hartford, because if they do, we're in trouble. Anyway, let's go ahead and... Uh, is it going to take 10 days for them to fully... We're going to form the regulars up in a brigade. You guys enter the garrison. I hope I hope you're not fighting these guys. Because everybody's in fog of war here. So they might be driving on Hartford. Outnumbering it handily. But the good news is we've outnumbered the enemy two to one here at Newport. So I can still leave a garrison of 1,400 troops at Providence while advancing on Newport. And you know what? Let's... Did I not bring one of my... Oh, shoot. These boys got to come south. They were all supposed to be Fusiliers. I don't know why they aren't. I don't know if these troops have pulled back from Hartford. It doesn't look like we're taking casualties there. Anyway, so these troops are coming up. We're going to fight this battle, but I want the other reserves to be in there. All right. Why are they not all in the battle? They're all like right up there. Anyway, let's fight this battle. Maybe we can wipe out an enemy regiment. That would be helpful. And that also leaves like a thousand men sort of to the west of, of Newport. It's raining. I feel like you get bad weather in this game a lot. All right. So we got Artie. Apparently our first lieutenant's already dead. So do they. They also have Artie. Trying to form a line up here. They're already retreating? Can we pursue them? God damn it, we didn't even get to fight. We inflicted like two casualties on the enemy. Maybe we'll do some damage with artillery while they try and run. Or at least maybe we can wipe out their artillery company. This is where you need frickin' cavalry to make that pursuit worthwhile. But we're at least charging into their, their guns. I'm hoping that matters, like the game doesn't count those losses. It'd be great to at least destroy the artillery company. They'll probably retreat and join with their other troops, which may be... guys finish this unit off looks like our boys are slightly faster than their artillery men who are running what a letdown huh all right they're shattered so if we go back to the global map they lose 82 men and four guns does that mean their artillery units destroyed it is good so i assume that company is gone for good Meanwhile, maybe I'll get some money from capturing those enemy guns. Kind of a lackluster, uh, lackluster engagement, but we didn't lose anyone and we inflicted 100 casualties, so I guess that's a victory. All right, let's pause here. 
So Newport, the enemy's going to retreat from... We're going to need to pr pursue them. Providence still is about 1,000 men. So does Leicester. Actually, it does look like Hartford is... The enemy's fighting there, maybe? We're losing men. So let's leave one unit behind to garrison, and let's move the others to Hartford's Relief. At least we got a roadway. And because we've got Providence and Lester Garrison, I'm not too worried about... Oh, God. Butcher, where are you running to? I'm not too worried about the enemy... Uh, being able to retreat into Leicester or Providence and take either town. No, oh, guys, go take fucking Newport. Oh, that's... I wanted to bring the regulars with me, but... Shoot, they're engaging in a melee. So they're overrunning the troops at Hartford already. Now we're bringing our reinforcements in. And what will presumably be a fairly even fight. They got about a thousand men. We got about a thousand with another 300 on the way. So we'll see... I guess our routed troops are, are routed, but they they haven't even started the pro process of taking Hartford yet. So also weird, there's two companies here and maybe artillery. I can't tell if that's what this is with the enemy advancing straight ahead. I'm assuming these are the garrison of Hartford that's running the reserves here, perhaps. All right, so the bad thing is our troops are like exhausted as they're as they're running up. Good thing is our troops are arriving on the enemy flank. So let's get this brigade here. Uh, no, not that way. All right, so we're just going to march toward the enemy. Where's our commanding general? He's back this way in the rear with the gear. Meanwhile, our troops who were in Hartford are retreating low on ammo. Their conditioning is actually not terrible. Oh, shoot. Enemy's up on my flank already. That's not great. All right, so I thought we were on their flank, but it would appear that the enemy, some of them, anyway, on our flank. All right, we need that cover of the woods here. You'd, you'd hope the artillery would be a big a big advantage. All right, meanwhile, what's happening over here? These guns, you guys got to get out of there. Get out of there. Don't let them take your damn guns. Or did they already take your guns? Looks like they're shooting muskets. All right, I'm going to hold here, get that advantage. The enemy did charge into some of our battalions here and is routing some of them. Our ammo is a problem. That's why they're retreating. So it looks like our guns were left up here. Let's hope we can get those back. I don't see the option to man the guns. Their condition is terrible, but they're getting pounded by the enemy guns. So let's go charge into these. Maybe we can overrun them with superior manpower. All right, we've got artillery here on this right flank fight. I'm gonna charge them, outnumbering them three to one. All right, we drove back these enemy gunners. Now we're getting hit in the flank by this other enemy artillery piece and routing. So we did wreck one enemy battery while getting wrecked by another. Meanwhile, these guys are, like, straight in my rear, just fighting this artillery. 
All right, so we broke the enemy here. We're going to have to try and push up. They have a lot of guns, actually. Can they shoot from here? Can they turn around and hit them from there? I don't know. I'm going to try and melee these guys with numbers. You think charging from front and flank would ha would give you a good chance of success? Also, when you outnumber the enemy heavily. Overall numbers do not favor me that much. It looks like things are fairly even. But... I did just drive this company back. I don't know if those are... Reinforcements or what? This is such a scattered fight, but we drove off this other enemy artillery battery. I have no idea where everybody is on this map. They're driving off those original garrison companies. We're kind of scattered here. I'd like to drive off this enemy battery of a hundred soldiers. Oh shoot! If we got eighty men, we can throw them into that get into that. I don't. Those guys are retreating. Apparently, I don't want to let those enemy guys get up to those guns. Alright, I'd like them to volley each other while these guys charge into this enemy artillery. They'll outnumber them. I don't know if it's enough, but they will. What a scattered fight. That's very difficult to follow. I'm supposed to have like 80 reinforce. I'm supposed to have like 300 reinforcements coming, aren't I? Can you guys charge these troops? Like, occupy this battery of guns. I don't know if they have any ammo there. As you route. I don't know why these guys, maybe because they're regulars, they can occupy guns. I'm not sure what the logic is there. Also, our troops are really low on ammo. I could really use those reinforcements. I hope they are coming. Oh, they just drove me off my own guns over here. Fucking A. What a clusterfuck. This is... All largely the result of horrific positioning. Does this battery have some ammo? Come on, guys. I guess get off the guns and just charge these assholes.
They're all low on ammo. Just use the bayonet. I know he shouldn't be charging from that far away, but... That's some wild firing. All right, so... I don't know if we're getting reinforcements or not. It does claim to look like we've got... the advantage in manpower, at least according to this blue line up here. I don't know how real that is. Uh, what's up here? These guys are retreating. Everybody's running all over the place. All right, we captured that enemy company, so that's nice. Let's bring these boys down. Maybe back toward the center of the map. I think these are my guns. Get my own troops back on them. Maybe they can fire some artillery at the enemy. I don't want you to charge. I just want you to shoot. You've got guns, right? Oh, God. Yeah, dismount those guns. You got no ammo. Are any of these troops coming back? Some of them. What about these boys over here? What are they doing? Good conditioning, bad morale. So this would seem to indicate up here that the enemy is ready to break and run. I don't know about my own troops, like... I don't know why it claims we've got the clear advantage and strength that. All right, some of these guys are firing already. These guys are breaking and running. What's up here? You outnumber them five to one. You should. Yeah, you broke them. Okay, good. I don't like charging with zero conditioning, but in this scenario where they're already charging me and we've got a slight manpower advantage, it feels important to try and prevent the complete destruction of the regiment here. We're losing a lot of manpower, though. It'd be real nice if any of those reinforcements that are supposedly around... Come up. All right, so they routed them. Bali against this. I think that's their last functioning company here, these 89 men. At least their last unrouted company. Which should explain the, the bar, bar graphs and charts and all that. Let's go charge into these guys. But yeah, this is a, might end up being a Pyrrhic victory for us. Again, kind of a scattered strategic map. Not the... Not the prettiest situation. All right, the game says they're routing. All right, they broke. Whoa, they just like miracle flew into the enemy. All right, I'm not going to catch them. Okay, so we lost about half our army, 766 men out of 1,400. We also lost six guns. The enemy, on the other hand, lost 842 men out of 1,100, so they lost an even greater percentage and 11 guns. And if we go here, this unit, Henry Lundgum's first company, the 6th Connecticut, was destroyed. Uh, the Caleb Butnam's third company of the 28th Regiment of Foot Under, command of Holman Hampstead, they were captured. Uh, this artillery company destroyed, so we did lose one gun battery destroyed. Uh, third company of the 6th Connecticut destroyed. So we lost one, two, three units destroyed. One of them being artillery. The rest of them should recover. 
Meanwhile, the British lost one, two, three, four, five, six companies of infantry destroyed and three companies of artillery destroyed. And again, I, I, I believe the fact that they are actually destroyed means that they won't be able to just pull back into a town and reinforce. So that that's good news. Three artillery companies destroyed should be huge news. It doesn't tell me if we captured those guns, so I guess we'll have to go back to the strategic map and see if the uh, arsenal was updated with any captured artillery pieces, and we'll see from there. But generally, I think that's good news. I'm assuming with that many companies destroyed, maybe even one of their regiments was fully destroyed. Okay, so we finished one of our projects which was raising funds, so we got some additional cash up here. Our wagons project was also finished. And Newport is captured? It is. All right, so these boys are militia, right? And they're just infantry. Three companies of militia infantry. We're going to put them in Newport. Send these 460 boys to Providence. And... These 260 men are going to go to Hartford. Evans' boys are not. I would rather Evans' boys go back to Providence or somewhere else because Evans, well, but his artillery militia was destroyed. Mm. Still. All right, let's see what happens here in the pursuit phase. So they surrendered? Hell yeah, brother. So we got 20 British prisoners. Meanwhile, they got 79 men left in this regiment, so we did destroy a whole a whole regiment of boys. Someone's shooting. Who's fighting? Maybe that was just leftover stuff from the battle. But I'm hearing clanking. Indicating someone is shooting. Oh, it's it's a warship. It's a battle. Let's see. So they've got two warships assaulting a supply ship of ours near Newport. Raid on Chelsea Creek. Redcoats performed a raid on Chelsea Creek seeking provisions supported by 580 newly arrived troops. I'm not sure where that battle is. The map will be expanding soon. Meanwhile, I am. Looks like they're sending those 580 troops south to Middleborough out of uh, out of Boston. I believe those are the reinforcements. Okay. Hartford. So let's see if we do Artie. We've got. Let's pause here for a second. Actually, let's get out of here. Let's go to the market. We can see that we've got 260 civilian muskets in storage, 582 brown besses, which we should probably start equipping some of our troops with. Um, go to cannons. We captured two more six-pound field guns. That is very nice. Those are much better artillery pieces than the three-pound gallopers. They're slower, but they are there. You can see here they're 36 to 61 sort of firepower, and then... 1900 to 1500 in terms of range so big advantage there not quite enough for a battery but meanwhile we we got our funds frankly we need officers like so i'm going to go with the officer recruitment and then after that then we'll go back to the continental army samson burn meanwhile he did the wagon option. Everything is locked except for quartermaster command. So we'll spend the next 59, 53 days doing that. I need the two officers, one to assign as our chief engineer and one to raise a new regiment, I suppose, to make up for Murray's regiment that was captured and sent to Middleborough. Okay. So gr great news in that we destroyed an entire British regiment. That is real big news. The British made good by reinforcing those 580 men out of Boston, but still, that materially weakens them. These boys need to get up to Providence to re-equip and 
rest and draw from Hartford. Or not Hartford, from uh, from the, the supplies there. Come on, guys. I didn't mean to do that. Let's go ahead and equip these Minutemen, these 100 Minutemen with Charleville's. So we're going to raise a Minutemen company at Hartford just because the map is about to expand west and they're going to potentially be on the front line. So I'd like a firepower oriented company that can harass the enemy. Are there 2,000 enemy soldiers here? And if so, where are they going? Intel claims King has 2,200 men. They probably came south from Fort Stevens. At least some of them, but where are they headed to? The garrison reached Providence. Into the garrison they go. Start, start drawing reinforcements from there. Let's let's get our commander out of out of our. I hate that you use your commander as a scout. Like another six hundred eighty men going there, so. Middleborough is going to be nice and strong for a thrust toward Providence. I can probably pull the reserves out of Newport to assist to even the odds a bit. If they really have 2,000 troops tramping, tramping the countryside out here near Mount whatever. All right, these are the troops we defeated, and they're retreating east toward Boston. So I, I think that was misreported. I don't think there's 2,200 troops. I think there's 500 and actually, you boys are all, do you not have food? Oh, God, your provisions are low. Lester's not on a supply line. That's part of the problem. But let's see if we can engage these guys in pursuit. Because they're probably real low on supply and morale and ammo and all that following that battle. Maybe we can finish them off before they can get to Boston. All right. Let's fight this battle. Second battle of the day. I think we got enough time in this video. See if maybe we can wipe. I'm going to guess the enemy's just going to retreat. Which kind of suck, but it'll give me some prestige, so. We can wipe out what's left of their artillery companies. Maybe give me some provisions. All right, boys. Advance through the fog with your commander at your head. Or rear, because you're way back there. Two stars. Nice. Does he not get to upgrade anything? Oh, he does. Here we go. Oh, but I can't do anything with it. Huh. I wonder if that's a, a feature yet to come. There they are. Maybe the enemy's going to fight me. Certainly advancing toward me. Oh shit, there's enemy on my flank. Well, hey Butcher, get back here. Alright, so we've got decent cover for the far left flank unit. They're not in great shape. Our conditioning is pretty good. So we're just going to try and lean on the enemy right flank. And maybe we can overwhelm them. Now our troops are militia, so they're not as good as our as our fusiliers. All right, let's try and use numbers here. They did flank us but only with 70 men, so they char then they charged us with 90. With two, two of our companies getting involved here, that should give us a better situation numbers-wise. Hey, Butcher, how about you get over there and lend some assistance? Now, the problem is the enemy troops' melee is considerably better than our own. So you can see our first regiment here is is routing. I didn't mean to. I misclicked that. All right. No, 
Go charge that artillery. At least knock those guns out. All right, so both our companies on the far left are routing, despite outnumbering the enemy. They didn't all get into the battle, I don't think, quickly. So this may not end up being a victory, boys. The Redcoats are disciplined, damn them. Maybe I can overrun their artillery? Hey, we secured the farm. Maybe our boys will rally? Maybe I'll get the whole Providence garrison destroyed. We didn't even overrun the damn enemy artillery. Good news is most of those companies routed before they were too badly destroyed. Looks like we routed one of the enemy companies. Okay, they're going to get pinched. All right, I'm going to lose this fight. I'm going to get out of here before I lose too much of my army. So we'll leave the battle. We lost about half of our, a little less than half our force. They lost one-sixths. I don't think any of our units, I should have checked, but I don't think any of our units were actually destroyed. So we should all just fall back on Providence, a friendly, a friendly occupied town. Or they're going to keep fighting? No, they're going to withdraw. Hopefully they withdraw in Providence, as opposed to some other place. I mean, may pursue, they are. All right. Bring up some reserves. Hey, the map expanded, by the way. June 1st, map expanded. We'll take a look at that in a second. I have a bunch more companies now, too. I don't think I get more officers, though. If we go to headquarters. Nope, no more officers. Okay. You know, despite that victory at Newport, I didn't really gain a ton of prestige. Which is a little unfortunate. Hey guys. We're supposed to retreat toward our base right here. Capture Ticonderoga is another objective. We gain 14 artillery pieces, 20 reputation. We lose 15 if we don't take it. So we're now into the phase of the game where it is going to penalize us if we are not doing important things. Meanwhile, we outnumber these guys pretty heavily if we just engage this one regiment. So maybe we can wipe out Hampstead's regiment. I'm not even fighting that fight, but we outnumber them like 10 to 1. I don't want to get them way out of out of contact here. Can you just fire a volley into them? I don't think we destroyed them, but they're down to like 40 men. Meanwhile, maybe we can capture, capture some provisions here. Does this opening up the map change the supply situation at all for Leicester? It does. So Leicester is now linked to Hartford via Hatfield. So that should get provisions up here and allow us to no longer be out of supply. You can see the map expands west into New York, Kingston, Albany, Bennington, uh, Fort Montgomery, sort of on the southern edge of the map here, is in British control. We may want to try and change that. Uh, meanwhile, New Haven is another port which opened up, so now we have ports at Newport and New Haven. And then actually Falmouth up here in the northeast opened up as well. Uh, this kind of gets the British part of the game going here, Fort Lovell, Fort Ticonderoga, 
or not British, but like Canadian. Well, we're not into Canada yet, but it's getting, it's pushing further north. Fort Ticonderoga, Fort Saratoga, Fort Frederick along the, along the river here. Um, and then uh, you've got Hubberton, Fort Lovell up here in the northern edge, Fort Rice, Fort, Fort Stevens isn't new, but Fort uh, Rice to its west. So you got a much stronger British position here. I'm assuming they draw supplies on map at Frederick, uh, probably. Um, and then obviously Boston, Salem, Portsmouth are all ports. And, uh, and yeah, new sea zones too. That being said, can you guys take these provisions, please? All right, so New Haven has a nice little... Are these Are these all militiamen? Are all these new troops militiamen? It would appear we have no fusiliers who joined us, unfortunately. But now it also increases the obligation of our... Like, we can raise more troops, we can expand these regiments, but it also increases the obligation of our... Uh, troops in terms of muskets and, and other sort of overhead, if you will, logistical challenges. So King's Regiment's at about half strength. The other regiment, I don't even know if it was destroyed. If not, it's really in rough shape. We can buy 30 more ammo for 3,000 gold. I don't know that we need to do that. I think the ammo is less of a concern. Like, if we go to the market here... Ammunition, I mean, we've got 149 in storage. Yes, 30-something would have been nice, but... Issue is muskets, so let's go to the black market. That money is going to be more useful in freeing up some muskets, but we also have, again, 560 muskets available. So which company had... Are these the, guy, the company? Is this the company that had? Let's get them into... Because we had one company which already had two... Or we had one regiment which already had two companies of brown best equipped troops so with 500 mu muskets that's not really enough to equip a new fresh company but it might be enough to finish equipping a company that already has them so the these guys have two companies with brown besses they're going to draw another 40 or so to get them up to strength which will bring us down to 480 so we can definitely equip this unit with brown besses go ahead and apply that So that's three companies with brown besses. So that's another 120. So this should free up some civilian muskets for the other units too. So they'll pull 92 immediately and then, so let's see here. So the arsenal's at 395. These guys are immediately equipped, but there's three, 32 more, 38 more. 70, I'm going to do bad math here. 110. All right, so we've still got plenty to equip. These guys with brown buses. And these guys with brown buses. So it leaves 188 to fill these units out, which should be enough with new units. Um, and then that also will increase the civilian's civilian musket stock by 377 which should get us a long ways toward replenishing our losses here probably not entirely actually we had some companies wiped out here in the sixth connecticut remember so we need to go ahead and raise some new units new companies we can raise new fusiliers which is nice i, I definitely don't have enough regular muskets for that um, some of these guys already have Charleville's. Go ahead and give these guys Charleville's. It's not enough for the whole company, but what I can do is I can go to the market. We've got some Charleville's on the market, so let's go ahead and buy. I don't know, we got 7,000 gold, so let's see if we can buy. We just raised a new unit, which would require 100 and something. We've got not. Ugh. All right. We'll spend half our money on new Charlevilles. All right. So ninety five, so they need a hundred more here, and then they need twenty five more here, so they need one twenty five. So we've got 
They'll have a surplus of 60 to care for casualties after purchasing that stuff. All right. All right, we'll, we'll proceed a few days and see how things look. So we had one well-executed, well, not one well-executed, but we had one victory, which is a bit messy. And then we had one uh, defeat, which didn't really change the strategic picture because the enemy regiment was still retreating. And then we were actually to gain the loot of the battlefield as the enemy kept retreating. We brought our fusiliers up. Let's get to June 5th and see how things look. There we go. All right, so not enough muskets again. What are we short on? Not the Charlevilles. We are short on the civilian muskets because some of these companies have very low manpower numbers right now. So, Charle... That's the wrong... All right. So, Brown Besses, fully equipped. We got 188 left in the arsenal. 32, 30. So these guys didn't draw any reserves. Okay, so we'll keep that as is. But basically, this second Connecticut are all very well equipped, all brown vests. They're basically as well equipped as a red coat regiment. Providence boys. Two Charleville units. 162 in the arsenal. We need 88 and... 13, so we need 101. We got 50 to spare. At the end of the day, I need more civilian muskets. Um, what is our per... Do we, with all these new towns, do we have any actual production capability? So we've got resources... I don't know that we have production capability. It doesn't look like it. So I really need to build a production building. I kind of still feel like Hartford is the most logical place to put it. It might be our largest town, 18,000. I guess New Haven has 23,000 workers. It's a little bit more shielded from the British, I think. Maybe. So let's, if we build a blacksmith house, it'll cost 800 gold. It'll increase our production by 0.5. So we'll build a, a blacksmith house there. We'll also build a blacksmith house at Hartford. So we've got a little bit of production capacity. And then once those are done, both those towns have over three in terms of construction points, so they can build a little bit more quickly. Once they're done, then we can start more economically producing muskets because purchasing stuff all the time is not... Not a great approach. Meanwhile, we did finish our recruitment drive, so we do have a new officer. We can make Zacharis Vittel, and I might maybe I should look at all my officers to see who would be the best engineer or anything like that, but at least we got another officer. We've got one more officer to spare, which we could raise a new regiment, which feels smart, but we're going to hold off on that. Let's keep working toward Continental Army. I don't have enough reputation points here to accelerate it really at all. So we're just going to try and tick this number down a bit by a few days. And we'll probably switch back over to funds or something because I, I don't think we're gaining much money. Our salary is more than our income right now. I hate to do this, but I think we're going to reduce the salary back to the starting point, which is a zero morale, zero percent morale. will save us a bit of money, especially now that we have all these additional regiments. But, yeah, so we are a little bit more spread out now, too. So the enemy could definitely advance out of Fort Saratoga toward Albany or Bennington. I assume Montgomery is not super well guarded. Ticonderoga is an objective for us. It's a level three fort, but I'd have to bring such strong forces out west to do that. It would almost ensure giving up Providence. We've got some time. We've got 80 days to take it. Wants me to produce 100 muskets. I can't do that right now. We do need more muskets, though. I've only got 2,000 gold. But let's spend 1,600 of it on 200 more civilian muskets just because they're the cheapest option. 
And I could make a little bit of money selling stuff. So we've got naval six pound guns and four pound guns in storage, which would be useful if we had any ships to put them on. I am not building any ships right now. So I think it might just make sense, especially for the smaller guns, the four pounders. We can go ahead and we can sell five of them for 400 gold. That's not much gold, but it is something. We could also sell some of our three pound gallopers, but I'd rather not. It's better to keep them in the arsenal somewhere. We could sell the captured six pounders for almost 2,000 gold, but we'll hold on to that for the moment. Six rate sloop of war. How many guns does that carry? 28, theoretically? Oh, that's more like a frigate than a sloop. But sloops are usually in the 18 to 24 range. Once you got 24 plus, you're a frigate. That's a fifth rate, but whatever. Um, we could buy one on the market, actually. I wonder, does, assuming if you buy a gun on the mar or ship on the market, it comes with guns. But. Anywho, those additional civilian muskets should help us get our troops equipped again. Hartford's got 520 recruits twiddling their thumbs. I'm just glad that Lester's on the, uh... all right, so we've got Enoch Peter. We've got one more officer to raise another regiment, which we, maybe we should do that at Hartford. I don't have guns for the boys, though. That's part of the problem. Let's go ahead and give some artillery here. And then I'm going to swap some new regiment out or whatever at the Hartford garrison, get those troops forward. Anything with artillery needs to be in the front lines. In my opinion, either at Providence or at Leicester. Can I? I don't know how, if there's a way to like upgrade your character. It seemed like it, we had an upgrade available for some of, I don't know if the upgrade option is available for your officers yet. In terms of like up here, you can see, you can like upgrade a unit based on the experience they have. But I digress. In any event, we've been going for almost an hour. We successfully retook Newport in today's episode from the British. We actually we also won a victory near Hartford, despite it being a running battle of chaos. And then we lost a battle near Leicester, but then we also, I mean, we successfully pursued these guys out of the way. We destroyed an entire enemy regiment, which I think is a huge victory, like the actual destruction of the unit. And those guys are POWs now near Leicester. No, Hartford near Hartford. We've got 20 enemy POWs working in our working for us. We also had the map expand further west. And that's where we find ourselves in this version of Amer Ultimate General American Revolution. I know it's not a perfect playthrough. That's kind of the point, right? I think watching someone just obliterate the the opposition is not necessarily the most enjoyable experience, but that's my preference. With that being said, that's the end of this episode. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm out.